I'm going to do another video on setting up Emulation Station and RetroArch on Windows. Uh, one reason for this is the download page for RetroArch looks a little bit different and RetroArch itself actually just got a really big update. And also I think I've made it a little bit simpler to set up the configuration file that way uh, it's you know just a lot easier and a lot faster to set up. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is download emulation station from the emulation station website uh, download the installer and I've already done that so let me go ahead and open that up make sure all the boxes are checked so that you get the uh, visual C++ pack okay and then once that is done go ahead and open up emulation station and you'll get an error message but the reason we do that is just to generate the systems configuration file and then if you go into the description of this video, you'll see a link to Pastebin, which I have a version of my configuration file. Scroll down to the raw paste data, and if you select all and copy that into your configuration file, and then once it's in there, go ahead and click edit and replace, and then you're gonna type in replace this just like that I'm not sure if uh, it's case sensitive so just type it exactly like that and then you're just gonna type in whatever your username is um, so my name is Vincent or if you have uh, two words go ahead and type in two words um, you might know that previously there was issues with you know having a space in your name um, so I've got, gone ahead and changed this configuration file so that it's a direct path and it uses quotation marks where it needs to um, in order to just get rid of all the, the issues we were having with uh, you know using the shortcuts. So once that is done, we're done with the configuration file. We're going to go to the RetroArch website, which is libretro.com go to the downloads page and we're gonna make our way to the stable build for 1.2.2 and now this is where you're gonna have to know if you have 32-bit or 64-bit windows so uh, if you're running windows 8 you can just right click the windows logo and click system oh, click the wrong one otherwise if you're running windows 7 you can click on the, win the windows button right click computer and click properties and then that'll bring this screen up and you can see if you have 64 bit or 32 bit I have a 64 bit operating system so I'm going to download the Windows X64 and then I'm just going to download that which I already have it on my desktop to save time and then you're going to want to download the cores so um, to download the cores you're going to do the same thing with uh, the stable folder then we're going to click archive and then stable and then whichever your whichever uh, operating system you have and then go ahead and download the cores so once you have those downloaded they are just zip files so all you need to do is open up the RetroArch zip file and we're actually going to create a new folder in our dot emulation station folder called systems and inside of there we're gonna make a folder called RetroArch and then copy all of these folders into or extract all of those files into the RetroArch folder okay and once uh, the RetroArch files are extracted we're going to extract the RetroArch cores into the cores folder which is within the RetroArch folder so I'm just gonna copy them in there just like that And then I'm just going to show you what RetroArch looks like because you'll notice that it looks a little bit different than it did in my last video. This was a major update, um, but it doesn't really have an effect on you if you're going to be using Emulation Station, but it does look a lot better. So if you, um, if you are interested in just using RetroArch as a front end, it, it actually looks really good in my opinion. But anyway that was just a big part of the RetroArch update so once we are done with putting the cores and the and RetroArch into that folder um, you're pretty much good to go 
the only thing you need is ROMs, which I'm just going to copy my ROMs right in there. Um, and you'll see I named them just kind of how the uh, short name was. This was me just testing something. Um, so if you look here, we're going to pull up NES. And it says right here that the path is dot emulation station ROMs NES. So that is what I named it. And you're going to want to follow those same um, file naming scheme uh, schemes um, unless you want to redo your configuration file. You can organize your files however you want. This is kind of just a, a jumping off point. You'll notice that I really only put like seven or eight uh, different systems in the configuration file um, because I figured you can really, I mean, and RetroArch can handle, I think, like a hundred different systems. So, um, it'd be a very long file just to put a hundred systems that most people aren't going to use. So, um, if there is something that you want to use that's not in there, uh, it's it's pretty easy to follow this this pattern to put your own your own uh, emulators in there. So now that we have all that set up, I'll open up Emulation Station. It's going to want to set up my gamepad, which I'm just using a keyboard right now. And we have a few different systems in here. And I'm just going to pull up NES as an example. And it opens up just like that. I'll hit escape to close, and then if you close the emulator, it'll, it'll open back up. That's all it takes to set up Emulation Station with RetroArch. If you want to set up Dolphin, which is the GameCube and Wii emulator with Emulation Station as well, then head over to my YouTube channel and there's a video on how to uh, get Dolphin working, which actually I already have it in, the, in this configuration file, so it really should, should be simple. Uh, if you've seen my other videos on setting up Emulation Station with RetroArch, uh, these are really similar videos. Uh, I really just wanted to make this configuration file set up a little bit simpler. And then, you know, with the RetroArch download page changing, uh, I just felt like it was, it was time for an update. So uh, if, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and comment on this video or send me a message through YouTube or send me an email. Uh, if you are interested in more videos about emulation, then you can subscribe to my page. If you have any requests, then you can also send me a message or comment on one of my videos. Thanks.